They're coming out here to compete. It's a shame to start away. Well, 40 points, at least 40 World Cup points, are on the line right now as we get set for the men's gold medal match here in Ogden, Utah. They've cleared the field of play, and we are getting set for Team Canada taking on Team USA. Now, the world record was set by the USA at the World Championships in Torino last year. A score of 239, considering the weather conditions here today. I'm not sure we'll see anybody get that close to that score. No, I'd, I'd, put, I'd put my $10 down that they're not going to be that high. Of course, they're shooting just as well. It's just that when you have these turbulent conditions, you can't get that sort of that high score. <laughs> That's an interesting little... Uh, Our friends from Canada having a good time down here in the lower 48 as you take a look at Team USA. Braden Galantine on the left, Roger Willett Jr. in the middle, and Rio Wild on the right. They'll be shooting at target number one. They defeated Mexico in the semis, defeated Colombia in the quarterfinals to get to this match. Rio doffing his cap to the crowd. Rio, who hails from nearby Pocatello. We say nearby, it's about 90 minutes north of Ogden, Utah, but when you're competing in <laughs> World Cup archery, you're traveling all around the world, so it's nice for yeah. Rio to be back pretty pretty much in his own backyard. As far as world archery is concerned, yeah, he's in his backyard. The three archers for Canada, Andrew Fagan, Chris Perkins, and Simon Rousseau. Getting the big thumbs up right there from their fans. Here in the stands of Lindquist Field, Canada got to the gold medal match by beating Australia by six points, 232 to 226, and then won the tiebreaker against El Salvador, winning in a shootout. That was a, yeah, incredibly tight match. Of course, we're, we're in a completely different venue than you were all week long. Yeah. That was over at the Golden Spike Arena Fairgrounds, out in the open. Not yeah. really any kind of protection from the wind no. or anything else. No, great venue, because we had plenty of space. We could have a great training field. We have a great competition field, but we were exposed and it varied immensely day to day, morning to afternoon. So here's the man who's number one in the world in compound archery, Rio Wild from Pocatello, Idaho. You can see why. Set the table for Roger Willett Jr., who defeated Rio in Istanbul last fall in the gold medal finals of the World Cup. Roger had a fantastic year last year. He was just Didn't absolutely he? awesome, yeah. He's a fantastic guy, such a nice guy, and his performance all year was, was second to none. In fact, prior to going to China for stage four in Shanghai, he had won nothing but gold, had five gold medals altogether. The first three stops in the World Cup circuit last year. Yeah, uh, that says it all. I mean, there's a lot of athletes go through their career without ever getting the gold. To pick up five in one season is just astonishing. By the way, Braden Gelantine, no slouch either. He comes no. in ranked number two in the world. And the Americans off to a good start. So is Team Canada as the Canadians post a nine on the first shot. The Americans with 29 points on the first three arrows of the first end. Ten. And there's a 10 on the line. And you got to touch it. So Andrew Fagan, 26 years old, puts it on the line for a 10. And here is Christopher Perkins, who won the World Championships in Torino last year and did it in dramatic fashion, defeating three of the top Americans. Yeah, that was... A surprise, you know, you, you you never know going into these shoots because you don't know how people are training at home. You see them every month, every, every sort of once a month at internationals, but you've no idea whether that was a true reflection of their form or whether secretly they're shooting fantastic. And he just turned up and he was shooting awesome. So it was real wild so far this year, real wild. Well, he's coming off a uh, three gold medal performance in Antalya at stage two last month and in April in Shanghai brought home two gold medals and one silver. So he's got six World Cup medals already coming into this competition here in Ogden. Yeah, he's he's having a good time. I mean, for every one of these individual World Cups you win, you get a you get a watch, you get a long jeans watch. And I said to him, surely you've got you've got enough watches. You can you can just <laughs> chuck me one. You can throw me one, but apparently not. Apparently he keeps his uh, dad and his brother both world class archers as well. He keeps them. Uh, well stocked on timepieces too. Nobody in the Wild family should ever be late. No, there's no excuse there. 
What a great shot by Braden Gelantine as he hit the spider. There's an eight. It's all good. I'd like to see a picture of him just wearing like all his watches. <laughs> It's just drifting over there. So Fagan's nine. Puts a lot of weight on the shoulders of Christopher Perkins. Seems like he can cope with it though normally. He shoots a 10. It's a two point lead for the United States. Right in there. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Yes. So Chris Perkins keeping his team in this match. Trying to keep uh, the Americans within eyesight, be able to see them. Not too far off in the distance, 58 points out of a possible 60 for the United States. That's Guy Kruger there in the Americans boxers coach. Guy's normally associated with the Olympic side of our sport, but uh, he's happy to step up to the line to support anyone from his home country. So Fagan, Russo, and Perkins. And there's a good look at Old Glory wafting in the breeze here in Ogden, Utah. You can tell it's blowing pretty much to the northeast right now. And those are strong winds. The problem is what's happening on the ground floor. Yes. We know that up there the direction is quite clear, but I think with that coming over the top of the stadium, if we had flags all the way around the stadium, they'd all be pointing in different directions. Yeah. Well, and as the evening balls here in Ogden, Utah. That windsock may be blowing in all sorts of different directions. In fact, I think I don't have my meteorology degree, but I think we'll see the wind start to come from the canyons to the east, and they'll blow from the east to the west. So it could shift around that way, which would make things even more interesting. Yeah. I thought on some of our individual competition days, the sun was getting so low over it Golden Spike. I thought it was starting to get in some of the left-handed athletes' eyes. It was a bit of a mm -hmm. bit of a concern, but luckily we finished before it became became too much of a problem. So there's a 10 for Rousseau, who's 22 years old. Finished 17th in the men's competition this week here in Ogden. And he gets Canada off to a good start here in the second end. Now the rangy Andrew Fagan, who you could tell as soon as he released it was unhappy with the yep. shot. What, just to explain, because for some people they think the, sh the arrow went there and the, it went right in the seven because his follow through was like that, but more than likely it was the fact that his sight got blown off into the seven over on the right and as he shot it he was trying to pull his hand over as he shot to move it over. So it's more like the the different looking follow through, the erratic follow through was the result of the fact the arrow was going off away from the gold rather than the fact that that follow through put the arrow away from the gold. So he was trying to make the best of a bad situation. It's interesting what goes through your mind and you have to make these split second decisions. You watch it on the video and you count, because we got high speed film that records at like five, uh, six, five to 6,000 frames a second and you, you look at the time it takes and you think, well, there's no way your brain can do anything that fast, but you know yourself as an athlete. You can process was, that. Absolutely, the site was pointing at the six, the release aid went off, and I was able to put it into the seven or the eight just to save a bit of, save a few points. But that only comes from thousands of hours of practice. So a 10 from Real Wild, a 10 from Roger Willett Jr. Will there be a 10 from Braden Gelantine? Not close, quite. but not quite. So Braden? who will be going to Tokyo along with Rio Wild for the World Cup Finals. We'll see them both there. But they're building upon that lead for Team USA as Rousseau answers with a nine. Now it's Fagan, who's got to be about six foot five, I would guess. There's One a, of the taller archers. There's a reek of guy on the Canadian team who's who's even taller. So they're, they're obviously getting plenty of food up in Canada. <laughs> and people often ask me, is it an advantage, a disadvantage? What's the perfect body type for archery? And I'm like, really want to have a look inside the brain. We want, we want, we want the guys and girls with the best brains 
It doesn't overly matter. You can come in as a short guy and be a multiple world champion, or you can come in as six foot five. It's not, it's not a huge it's, factor on how you perform. It's brains and temperament. Yeah, yeah. And when you're, of course, when you're trying to screen youngsters to get them into your programs, it's hard to, how to ask me. You're gonna be okay standing for eight hours a day in a field shooting arrows on your own. You know, it's a difficult one. It's much easier to just measure someone and say, what, what's your wingspan? How tall are you? Sure. But for our sport, it doesn't work that way. What are you going to do when there are people in the stands and they're keeping score and it counts? Yep. That's what Roger Willett's going to do. He's going to shoot a 10. Roger, who hails from the great state of Virginia. And when he's not out shooting bows and arrows, he's up in a tree somewhere trimming limbs. He is one tough, strong guy. And when he's not doing that, he's always in the ocean. I've seen pictures of him yeah. in the ocean with his dogs, and it's beautiful where he lives. He loves the sea. Maybe one time I should finish up the World Cup here and uh, go and visit some of my American friends and see a bit more of the country. So the Americans surveying the situation right now. Lots of water as teams try to stay hydrated out here. It's not only hot, it is extremely dry. Extremely dry. Basically, Ogden, Utah is right on the edge of the desert. If you go west, you're into the desert. If you go east, you're into the mountains. Okay. So this is High Plains Desert. It's extremely dry. And extremely, as you can see, windy, as you can see the tree out there behind what is uh, normally known as center field here on the baseball diamond. And there's a good look at Dean Alberga, who has got to have the best job in the world going around the world, taking pictures of some of the greatest athletes. He is constantly on the go, just going country to country, making sure that the World Archery website's just got some of the best shots in the world. And yeah, he's a great guy. And because he knows the athletes, the athletes are much more comfortable with him being around. They know he's not going to step on their bow. He's not going to get in the way. So he's able to get in there and get, get the best shots. And you can see Dean's work by going to archery.org. That's archery.org. I won in there this week, and I actually took some pictures off there myself mm -hmm. for, of me because you're able to download the photos, and he'd done some nice pictures of myself shooting my match and on practice day. So I went on there and downloaded them and put them in my photo album. Captured some golden moments, and someday you'll be sitting on the front porch showing them to the grandkids, yeah, right? Yeah, probably, probably. You're talking about the dryness. A lot of these athletes, uh, before they come to Ogden, they went to the Eastern Sports Foundation facility in Florida. Now there, it's equally as hot, but they said the humidity was through the roof, and I've never experienced that, and they were trying to explain to me what it was like. Entirely different climate. Not much humidity out here in the Intermountain West, where Canada has gotten off to a strong start here in the third end. Nine. Fagan with a nine. And now back to Chris Perkins. It's interesting, he was ranked 176th in the world before going to Torino last year. That world championship wow. did wonders for his world ranking. It made his career and made his reputation, but that's what world championships are for. You know, it's nice when someone new just breaks in and and continues to, like he is here, continues to prove why he's world champion. Just looks rock solid. Yeah. Rio probably has one of the heaviest, mass weight wise, one of the heaviest bows on the field. Each one of those, you can see all the weights coming out the front and out the side. Each one of those little weights is, is an ounce, and I think he's got like 21 ounces on the front and about 16 to 18 on the back, and that's substantially more. I think when I was interviewing Braden last time, he had, I think he had four ounces on the front and six on the back. And he says this works best for him, but for some reason, Rio's going down a different path to everyone else, and for sure, he's getting the results. So maybe more of us should be shooting more mass weight, or maybe it's just, just a thing for him but I'm sure there's a lot more people around the world who are giving it a try. Right now, the Americans very much on the same page. You saw the grouping, great grouping, with those three arrows here to start the third end. But Team Canada starting to pick up things and get into a groove right now. Nice shot by Rousseau. And Andrew Fagan now on the line. 
two years ago in Ogden. He won a men's team silver medal. It's a close one. Trying to come up with gold here today, but Canada with its work cut out for it. As the helicopter flies overhead, hopefully not a distraction, not a distraction at all for no. Chris Perkins. I was gonna say, hopefully it doesn't wanna land. That might be a bit of a distraction. That would be the turbulence you wouldn't be able to deal with. No. Look at all those weights all stacked up on the front there. Everyone should have the opportunity just to pick up his bow and just feel what it's like, because it's, it's different. Well, Rio picks it up for about four hours every day, practices four hours a day, and keeps score on every shot he takes in practice. And I think that's him being modest. I think you'll find us closer to eight hours a day. I really do. I think since he since he he's quit gone work, full time. Yep, since he's gone full time, I get a feeling he doesn't do much else but shoot, and it's paying off. Just shows what you can do when you really commit the time. That's it. Fantastic. Love to watch Braden Gellin team brings a lot of emotion to the sport, and these three together, boy, they are tough. Look at the grouping right there. I think Braden's been full-time professional for many years now. I don't know if he's ever had a real job, to be honest with you. Not that this isn't a real job, <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's nice work if you can get it. It is, and he, he shows up week in, week out, and shows why it's the work that he gets. He deserves it. Has a background in marketing. Yeah. And there you see the judges closely inspecting those shots, those arrows. From that shot there, it does look out. Originally on the wide shot, I thought it might be a 10, but I think that's gonna go down as a nine. So Canada, 166 out of 180. After the first three ends. And of course, it's not as though the Canadians have not been shooting well. No, not at all. They're just against what most people would consider to be the best team in the world right now. It was that second end where the Americans outscored them 59 to 53. That opened up the daylight between the United States and Canada. It's very important as an athlete not to get distracted by the judges down there calling, because normally you would be down there as an athlete, you would get to see the arrows up close during the qualifying, you would call them out, and you'd be there with the judge deciding whether it was in or out. And sometimes when you're 50 meters back and you, you can't get distracted by it, it's out of your hands, there's no point. I've seen people get upset that, oh, sure, that was in. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. You've just got to move on, step on the line, and get the job done. Just like that. Just like that. Great shot by Rousseau who came in ranked 65th in the world, only 22 years old. Fagan, 26 years old. And Perkins, I believe, 20 years old. So a very young go, trio of archers from uh, Canada competing for the gold medal here. There could be a decade of success standing there. And of course, Roger Willett is uh, older than those guys as well and still absolutely <laughs> world-class. And that is the beauty of this sport. You can compete for a very, very long time at a very high level. Yeah, if you put the work in, you can get the job done. That's an awesome belt buckle. There's the belt buckle you want. And it belongs to Rio Wild. Mr. Rock Solid. Dead center. Dead solid. Perfect. He's serious, isn't he? On the field, absolutely. Yes. Off? Off the field, <laughs> fantastic, lighthearted guy, easy to talk to, easy to get along with. But you can tell out there, he absolutely means business. He's all business. Roger Willett is too. Roger looking for his first medal here in 2012, and he's just moments away from getting it, barring anything unforeseen from happening. And another 10 for Brayden Gellantine. Yeah, Red Roger just dropped down performance-wise at the beginning of the year, but it uh, looks to me like he's uh, well and truly on the way up now. So Canada did pick up one point Not bad though, man. after those first three arrows of this fourth and final end.
and Andrew Fagan trying to keep hope alive. Talk about grouping. Yeah, excellent grouping. Shame about the venue. So here's the final shot from Chris Perkins, whom we shall see later on in individual competition. There you go. Beautiful shot. All right, let's go, Rio. Again, proves why he's world champion. So the Canadians will settle for 224 points. The United States needing just 22 points to win the match. I think they're going to be in the... X, 230s, I think. Nice Once again, the world record was set by Team USA in Torino last year. The world championships, 239. If they can get into the 230s today, considering yeah. these conditions, that would be excellent. That 239, that's one point drop. That's just phenomenal shooting. And right, it's try, almost impossible in these conditions. But saying that, they just... Roger and Rio just laid down two Xs. So Brayden Galantine for the match, and there it is, three straight tens. Actually four to finish off the match. That's fantastic. Deserved, well-deserved winners. 233 points for the United States as they win going away, 233 to 224. They fall six points short of their world record from a year ago, but on a day where it's about 100 degrees and the wind is blowing, uh, I think they will take this. No, that's a really good world-class score. And yeah, just that, that little bit better than Canada. Showing why they're the team to beat on the World Cup circuit. So Team Canada gets the silver medal, Team USA gets the gold. And it is the first gold medal of the day for the United States. So far, just to recap this match, there you see the final score, 233 to 224. The USA really pulling away by going up six more points in that second end, 59 to 53. And they wind up winning by seven. So most of that uh, difference 